And we welcome you into this week's episode of the Penn State Baseball Show. Brian Tripp here from Medler Field at Lebrano Park. The Penn State Baseball team leaving this afternoon to head on the road to take on Illinois in a Big Ten weekend series, a three-game series, coming off an eight-game homestand that wrapped up with a 10-1 to win over Pitt on Tuesday. Another big inning, great pitching on the front end and back end of that game, a real successful series for Penn State. Our guest this week, junior pitcher Frankie Sanchez, who transferred in from Southern New Hampshire. He's been able to get back onto the mound after battling some arm issues early in the season. He shares his process, insight into how he prepares for each outing. I think you'll really enjoy this conversation with Frankie this week. So again, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Let's get into our interview with Frankie Sanchez. Frankie, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, I know you guys are heading out on the road to, to go take on Illinois today, but appreciate the time here for the Penn State Baseball Show. Yeah, definitely. Uh, happy to be here. Um, you know, thanks for having me. Obviously, you kick off Big Ten play last weekend with Michigan. It was very challenging non-conference schedule as well. Going out to take on Stanford, had success there. Took on Virginia at UVA. But now that you're into conference play, what's been the mindset of the group, the mindset of the team as as you shift gear into these conference games? Um, you know, obviously, these conference games definitely mean more to us and our uh, schedule, but you know, kind of like our coaches preach, um, you know, every game is kind of treated the same way. You know, we attack everything the way that we know, trust our process and just go after it no matter who's on the other side of the dugout. Um, But, you know, that's just kind of our game plan, sticking to that. Obviously, um, you know, playing in now, you know, bigger stadiums, bigger crowds, you know, obviously there's a little bit more on the line. However, you know, our day-to-day work and, you know, how we handle these games, um, you know, we just got to stay true to ourselves and trust that process that we've been working so hard for, you know, all throughout the fall and, you know, even leading up in this spring, you know, to the first game of the season to now, you know, there's really no difference. I know that uh, Coach Gambino likes to say the most important game is the one that we have th- that day. So, you know, just kind of sticking by that, um, you know, it's definitely our game plan for every game, no matter whether it's conference play, playoffs, you know, Big Ten tournament or if it's, you know, midweek against West Virginia, um, you know, just coming out, you know, battling every single pitch, you know, innings one through nine, you know, we got to uh, stay the course no matter what. You mentioned those bigger stadiums, bigger crowds. You look at the crowds that you had against UMass, Lowell, Michigan, and then 3,505 fans here in the ballpark on Tuesday against Pitt. How would you describe what having the home fan support has meant here at Medler Field at Lebrano Park? And what's the what's the vibe in the dugout down in the bullpen, wherever you may be during the game when you see that many people out here supporting your team? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, everyone's pretty much in the dugout. We definitely don't keep any guys in the bullpen unless, uh, you know, they're getting ready to go in the game. However, you know, it means a lot that we are finally starting to play games back at home. And we're getting these big crowds. I know the other day we had like the third most attendance in uh, Medler field history, which was awesome, you know, and it just goes to show you how much trust our fan base and uh, the people around us and how much they're supporting us in this new, um, you know, kind of revamp of the program, you know, with the new coaches and the new players and even the older players still being here and the returners, um, you know, it's definitely a vibe and something that has never been, um, here before that, you know, from my understanding, from what all the older guys said, but, um, you know, there's really that, that, uh, faith in the, in the fans that, you know, they're trusting us to go out and compete and win games and, you know, they're going to show out every night. Um, you know, I mean, even the week before it was, it was a colder day, but we still got some good turnouts, but, um, you know, I'm really excited to see when the warm weather rolls around, how, how many people we can really pack at that field, And, um, you know, especially if we, you know, continue winning and playing our game, um, you know, the more and more fans are just going to come out and support. And, you know, it means a lot. Like I said, that home field advantage is nothing like it. It kind of showed the other day when we played against Pitt, you know, kind of showed them who uh, (laughs) the real PA team is. And, um, you know, it was it was it was awesome. You know, and it brings that energy that we need. And, um, you know, there's nothing like it. If you weren't playing in the game, how many dollar dogs would you eat on a Tuesday? <laughs> uh, you know, I actually got asked that question. In a nine inning game, I think <laughs> I could probably nine inning game. I think you could. I would probably put down at least like five or six. I'd say just sitting there. <laughs> but 
that's just a on a that's just a casual number, you know. That's <laughs> just uh, if I'm just going hanging out, having you know four or five dogs at the game, but uh, but yeah. You know, I've never had a, a hot dog in my life, so I have not contributed to the total. But we talked about that buzz, that vibe, and you mentioned it in the ballpark. You know, as you're going around campus, and certainly those Tuesdays have become a phenomenon amongst themselves, but as you go around campus and classmates, like it feels like there is a real tangible buzz, not just in your locker room, in your clubhouse, but a tangible buzz around the program right now. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I feel it. It's 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 definitely different, you know, like from one of the returners have said in the past, a lot of times guys really kind of overlook this program. But, um, you know, like I just said now with all these new revamps that we've been doing, um, you know, it's been bringing a lot more attention to us, you know, our social media crew and all the uh, the marketing and that they've been doing has been uh, definitely bringing a lot more attention as well. Um, you know, we have a new YouTube channel. It's like YouTube series that's been coming out, you know, a little um, inside the life of Penn State baseball, hard knocks kind of spin off. You know, so I just think all of that together has been really bringing awareness to the community. And, um, you know, like I said, people are mm-hmm. loving it and staying on top of us. And, you know, they see us winning big games and, um, you know, they're just going to keep following us. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, we went down to uh, Davidson uh in uh, North Carolina. And we had some, you know, Penn State fans who followed us down there. And, you know, uh, we had a little bat boy, you know, Roman, he came out and he he's awesome. And he loves he loves our team, you know, been to a couple games, even even when we went down to uh, the USA complex, you know, he came and be our bat boy. And, um, you know, it's it's awesome to see that. And, uh, you know, people in other states who are even so far, you know, I mean, like they're, um, you know, even like I said, just this bat boy, his parents were like, we got to move up to state college, you know, when he's ready to go to college, he's got to go up there. And it's just really cool to see how like more and more people are just supporting this team. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome, you know, finally being a part of this program and being able to change for future to come, you know, and for future players for this program, you know, that's what it's really all about. So it's just kind of, you know, paving the way from here on out. Frankie, I know it's a great opportunity for you and you have a, a connection with Coach Loizo, but to go from Southern New Hampshire to a Big Ten Power Five school the size of Penn State, what has that transition been like? And I think you're talking about some of the things right there where, you know, there are always eyeballs, no matter what team it is, on a on a program like a Penn State. So what has that transition been like for you? I mean, it's, it's definitely been crazy, um, you know, f- to say the least. Um, you know, going from the school side, obviously in my old school, like, it was smaller classrooms. We only had probably about 4,000 kids. And then just kind of going to now a big school with, you know, close to 50,000 kids. And I'm in lecture halls of like 200 plus kids. Like it's definitely a big jump, but I think that, you know, having two years of college experience under my belt um, definitely helped me make a smooth transition into that. Um, And then, you know, as far as the baseball, it's definitely, it's definitely a lot cooler, you know, kind of having eyes on me and everything like that. But, you know, like I said, from the start of this interview, you know, when it comes to my game, nothing kind of changes. You know, I, I really like to just kind of go out with my game plan and, and you know, stick to my preparation and just kind of uh, trust it. And that's all, you know, I mean, but, you know, it definitely was a big jump, you know, seeing new things, experiencing new things, you know, just having new technology and new data and having, you know, more coaches and more, managers and you know kind of having like i said the cameras on you all the time um you know it's definitely it's definitely a cool unique jump for sure but um you know i think that you know having those two years of college experience kind of let me grow up and understand what you know life was really like at this level and you know i think that i was ready to take on you know any challenges i faced and i think you know i've been doing a pretty decent job so far so uh you know yeah, it's been a great experience. It's been fun to watch you, and it's been fun to watch you get back out there on the mound. I know you came in out of the pen against UMass Lowell, but to get back into that starting rotation against the Michigan, where are you at right now, and where do you feel like you're going to continue to grow as you get that next opportunity against Illinois this weekend? Yeah, you know, so I, I definitely – it was a slower start to the season. You know, I came out, out um, off the gates and started against Army – Um, you know, then after that outing, I was having some arm issues for a couple weeks 
Um, you know, then, I, you know, I was happy to finally get back, um, came in relief out of the pen against UMass for, you know, a smaller um, outing. And then again, back again against, um, you know, last week against Michigan. Um, but, you know, moving forward, I think that, you know, wherever role I kind of fall apart in, I'm, you know, I'm here to kind of help this team win games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously being in that starting role or if I came in as a higher leverage guy out of the pen, either way, you know, I'm just going to go out there, do my thing, um, you know, understand the situation of when I'm coming in and just tell my team win games to the best of my ability because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I'm here to do. You mentioned the additional data, the additional technology, Will Jallis and Mason Milano. You, know, you have so many resources to work with as a pitcher here at Penn State. How do you utilize those resources, but also know to compartmentalize all that information and still going out there and, and, and being a pitcher? How, how's that balance for you? I know some guys love all the data and love all the information and some, you know, want to take it in smaller smaller chunks. So how are you using those resources to your advantage while not also maybe being overwhelmed if you're a guy who's kind of like that in those situations? Yeah, well, Will and um, Mace, Mace Mala and all the, all those guys, all the people who yeah. work in our, um, you know, that whole manager um, section of, you know, data analysis, you know, Jake Stone, all, all those guys are really great. And they get you all the data, you know, every single time that we kind of touch the mound, there's data on every single pitch I've throw. And uh, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's not something like I've never had before. Um, and, you know, kind of understanding the data and talking with them throughout the week. And, you know, especially we more focus on that kind of stuff in a bullpen setting. Yeah. So, you know, when I throw my bullpens during the week, we'll kind of hone in on those and kind of try and make minor adjustments to, you know, whether it's a pitch design, whether it's a mechanical adjustment. Um, you know, there's a lot more things that go into it than just, you know, just watching the metric number pop up. However, um, you know, like I said, we kind of hit that more on during the week load, but then when it kind of comes time to go to the weekend, it's, you know, we're all we're focused on is just kind of execution, sticking to our plan, which is our plan against the opponent for that day and just going out and executing and, you know, winning a ball game, you know? So obviously when, you know, when it comes game day and it's time for me to get on that mound, metrics and mechanics and all that other stuff is kind of, you know, pushed off to the side. And now, you know, I'm just trusting my preparation that I've been doing the whole week with the numbers and, you know, my adjustments to play an effect where I don't even have to think about it in the game. And now my only thought process now is to kind of, uh, you know, just win the game, understand the situation and uh, stuff like that and just competing as hard as I possibly can because, you know, that's definitely – how you win baseball games. You know, you're, if you're up there thinking about your mechanics or something small, you know, it just, it's just, it's just going to kind of throw you off. Um, you know, obviously small minor adjustments while you're out there pitch to pitch, but nothing too crazy that I'm thinking about. And um, yeah, the, mechan the, the numbers will come, you know, I mean, if I'm in game, just kind of throwing my stuff as hard as I possibly can and locating, you know, they're going to, the numbers will show it's, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy how that works, but yeah. it, it is. You know, when you're when you're max intent at, in a game and you have some adrenaline going, you know, every all your numbers kind of look and your metrics definitely get better. So, um, you know, just trusting it and going out and competing. You know, that's what I love to do. Frankie, last one for you because I think it's fascinating, maybe for fans, alumni, people who are watching this to hear that process. You talk about coming up with a plan. When does you know? And let's just take we don't have to give any anything about the plan or any secrets away. But let's just take Illinois this weekend for an example. You know, when you know you're going to get the ball, what goes into coming up with that game plan? You know, how much is it collaborative with you because, you know, you want to tailor it to your stuff and how you like to pitch and your strengths, but also how you're going to attack certain hitters, a lineup, you know, whether it's Will, Jake, Mason, Coach Gambino, the manager program. What goes into to formulating that game plan of how you want to approach a lineup on that day and how you want to pitch? Yeah, so those guys, like you just mentioned, you know, Will, Gambino, um, Lott, Stone, all those guys do a great job of formulating, um, you know, uh, a scouting report on the other teams. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, I think that regardless of the team that I'm facing, I'm still going to kind of play to my strengths, mm -hmm. you know, whether that be like, you know, my heater command or my slider and uh, kind of play to that. 
However, we take a look at these, you know, scouting reports on the other hitters, and some of these guys have smaller holes in their swings, you know, different ways you kind of attack them just to get weaker contact. And they have all the numbers and all the data, um, you know, from their careers, you know, if they if they're a fifth year senior, we have four years worth of numbers on them and data on them. So, you know, definitely kind of how I attack a couple guys might change. However, for the most part, you know, we're going we're going with strengths, but there but there are certain guys, best hitters in the lineups that we kind of look that, you know, there's certain ways to attack them. So I think that kind of before a weekend starts, um, you know, we'll sit down with all the pitchers and kind of go through our scouting reports. And that's, you know, kind of the time that I'll talk with Will and figure out how, um, you know, how I would attack these certain guys based on my strengths and their weaknesses, kind of, you know, taking into account to both of them as well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Like I said, every, every weekend, you know, we, we do detailed scouting reports on whatever team it is, even if it's a midweek. Um, yeah. and you know, especially if I'm throwing sometime on the back end of the weekend, you know, I, I get to see two days or a day of the other team, other teams line up in the dugout. So, you know, that's really important being able to kind of watch the games before I go in and seeing how our pitchers attack these hitters and kind of see what they do, which also kind of gives me another good reference on how I'm going to start these hitters off. And then, you know, from there on out, everything's pretty much game dependent, what we need. And um, yeah, but, you know, like I said, those guys do a great job of putting together detailed scouting reports. And, you know, for guys who are super into it that like really want to know every single thing, every pitch, like uh, pre-advanced, you know, you can, but, you know, they do a really good job putting it together and making it easy for us. Frankie, really insightful. Great stuff. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate the time. No problem. Thank you for having me.